What's up, everybody? I said I was going to be doing a ruin video. Here it is. Sorry, it took a little longer. We're going to start out by uh, discussing what ruin currently is, what it's going to be, and my general opinions and thoughts on the change and how it's going to work, the, the, ben the pros and the cons, the benefits of what is going to go on with it versus the negative effect on killers in general across the ranks. So let's start out with what it currently is. A hex that affects the survivor's skill at repairing generators. All survivors are affected by ruin, which causes the following. Good skill checks result in a 3, 4, and 5% regression penalty of the generator. This is depending on the tier it is. Tier 1, 2, and 3. Great skill checks grant 0% bonus progression on the generator. Now, it is a hex, meaning it takes up one of the five totems on the map. It can be blown up instantly. It can last the entire game. Uh, typically, you know, it, it's not going to last the entire game. It might go one to two gens worth of time, minute and a half into the game. It can, however, be found instantly. Unfortunately, with the way some of the spawn points are, it spawns right next to where a survivor starts. Because, you know, survivors spawn almost directly across the map from the killer in general. And it can just be any of the five totems. Now, let's discuss what it's going to be. Hex Ruin. All generators are affected by Hex Ruin. If a generator is not being worked on, it regresses at 100, 150, 200%. Again, this is the tier 1, 2, and 3 of the normal rate. The hex effect persists as long as the related hex totem is standing. Now they say they're going to be working on where these uh, totems spawn, and hopefully they won't spawn directly on survivors. So both of these are what we consider passive debuffs on the survivors. One affects the generator progress in general as it's being worked on, the, the one on the left the way Ruin currently is, forcing survivors to hit great skill checks. Otherwise, it regresses, and it takes longer to complete. And on the right, what it's going to be after the next patch, it's when you're not working on a gen that has currently been worked on. Now let's take a look at the uh, generators, because this is a big thing. Generators when one survivor is working on a generator, it takes 80 seconds to complete. One charge per second over 80 seconds. So think about it as 80 charges on a generator. And you can see right here, depending on how many survivors are on it, it goes quicker. And even though the individual efficiency, as you see one charge per second, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, depending on the amount, it goes down. 80 seconds, if one person's working on a generator, 44.44, with two, three, 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 you know, with three, and 28.5 seconds. 30, under 30 seconds for a single generator, depending if four people are on it. Now, there aren't many four survivor generators in the game, and all four people being on a generator without uh, you know, a killer of being able to apply pressure there is pretty rare. However, if you spawn on one side and there's a shack generator, uh, on maps like Ormond, it can take you 40 seconds to cross the map and that generator can already be done. Now, let's look at the generator regression because as this shows, it's now going to be at a, let's just assume everyone's running tier 3, 200% regression rate the second they get off on. Yeah, you don't even need to kick it. So as soon as they get off the gen, it just starts regressing at a 200% rate. Now, the 100% rate is 0.25 charges a second. But the 200% rate, that'll be half a charge a second. So roughly it'll take 160 seconds for a generator to fully regress. Now, the issues I see with this 
uh, on the weaker killers. Now, I'm only really going to address kind of like red ranks when it comes to this. And you can take that for what it is. It's really hard to discuss, you know, low rank survivors because low rank survivors are going to be making mistakes all over the place as they start to understand the game. Uh, they don't know how to loop. They don't know how to pressure, how to hide, how to do anything. So we're, we're going to kind of address more of the skillful players uh, and specifically killers since this is a killer perk. So the way the ruin is currently used, they say the reason for this change is that 80% of killers are using this perk. And the reason why, uh, most people believe that generator speeds are a big issue. Like like we, we show here, 80 seconds to complete one generator. Times that by five generators that needs to be done, that's 400 seconds total. You have roughly seven and a half minutes of gen time period that needs to be completed. And that's only if one survivor is working on the generators. Now, if you're in a chase with one survivor and three survivors are working on three separate generators over an 80 second period, you can have three generators pop. Roughly assuming that three survivors are always working on generators. It only takes about four minutes for every single generator in the game to go. Now this is not accounting for, you know, the killer's ability to place map pressure. And that doesn't account for current ruin at all. Now, when it comes to great survivors, people that can actually hit their skill checks, current ruin doesn't really matter. If you're hitting great skill checks, even without the 2% bonus from hitting that great skill check, it still only takes 80 seconds to complete it. And that doesn't account for toolboxes either that can get a generator done in 55 seconds with only one survivor on it. Now, certain killers are able to apply map pressure, move around quickly, like let's take Hillbilly for instance. He's able to cover the map very quickly because he moves at a 200% base movement speed while in his chainsaw. Uh, so he's able to get places in about 10 seconds that would take other people about 20 seconds to get to. And he has an instant down ability. So long as you catch somebody in the open and they aren't able to loop you, you can instantly down them. Whereas any other killer requires two hits. The first hit, depending on how long it takes you to get it, let's say like 10 seconds before you're able to land that first swing. It causes you, them, the survivor to get a sprint burst and the killer to wipe off his blade. Now, if that survivor runs in a straight line after being hit, that survivor can run for 20 seconds without a killer catching up to them. So in total, that would be like 30 seconds or you know, let's say two people are working on a generator at the same time, nearly a full generator. So let's discuss the pros and cons currently of these passive perks that only last while the totem is up. Now, Ruin, the way I view Ruin and the benefit I see to it, is that it allows slow killers, ones without an early game, such as a trapper, clown, hag, anything that takes some setup, to kind of get that passive pressure on the generators that allows them to snowball in the mid or late game. Even if Ruin only lasts for 45 seconds because two survivors aren't looking for it, that's 90 seconds where they're not working on generators or over one full generator's worth of time, one generator's worth of progress. Those two are off of it. 
you're in a chase with another survivor that leaves only one survivor working on a generator. So even if it gets blown up in the first minute of the game, you still were able to stall a full generator's worth of time. Whereas the new ruin, during that time while you were chasing that survivor or setting up with something like a hag or a trapper or in a, you know, finding a survivor to get into a chase with somebody like a clown. Uh, it, it just, it doesn't apply any pressure to the other three survivors, meaning you can lose three generators in that amount of time. I view the previous rune as something that uh, helps the weaker killers get into the position to where they're able to actually be effective at high ranks. Yeah. If you notice in the red ranks, there's a massive skew towards uh, certain number of killers. You see a lot of spirits, freddies, hillbillies, and the combined like strength that you see, you see the nurse at S rank, you see hillbilly, huntress, spirit at A, you see, you know, the, there's the tier list that uh, everyone comes up with. And it's the ones at the bottom of that tier list that Ruin benefits the most. Now, with 80% of uh, killers using the previous Ruin, it obviously isn't just skewed to only the weak killers doing it. So even the stronger killers were using something that slowed down the game. And people saw an issue with that, which is why New Ruin exists. Now, New Ruin to me only benefits the killers that already have that strong map pressure. The Nurse, the Legion, the Hillbilly, possibly the Huntress. Now, Huntress is a 110% movement speed killer, and I think the old rune greatly benefited her because of her lack of speed, her lack of ability to cover the map. However, Huntress also has long-range engage tools where she can throw hatchets at a generator and push people off, slug people at a distance, throw back at hooks, and you know get somebody to not be at that hook. So that one's kind of up in the air to me. I personally feel like this is a bad change because I think it will reinforce the killer tier list. Somebody like a hillbilly that can consistently push people off generators to travel across the map quickly are going to benefit greatly from this. Now, here's an example. Currently with the surveillance and the ruin that's going to change, every single generator is highlighted in white. Anytime somebody gets on a generator, it is now red. So you know exactly where survivors are. So if four survivors go on four different generators, you will see all four generators turn red while the ones that are not working on are white. You have so much information as a killer right there. Now, if you're a hillbilly, you can travel to those generators quickly. You can push one person off. If they go into a strong loop, you can use your chainsaw to travel to the next one and, and continue to do this until you're able to either eat pallets because somebody was unaware you were coming and then make tiles specifically unsafe so you can start downing them quicker and snowball. If you're somebody like a nurse, you can blink to it. If you're somebody like a spirit, you can phase, and people won't even be able to tell that you are coming until they hear it and hear your footsteps. Now, if you're somebody like a trapper or clown, you see four of those generators go red, you're still a trapper or a clown. You have to walk to each one of those generators and apply that pressure. Now, when you walk to one and you get in a chase, there's no real benefit to the knowledge that you have those other three people on those generators. It, at least 
for map pressure wise because you're not able to apply pressure to those three generators. So while the combination is great for knowing that those are the four generators being worked and you can use that to your advantage later, we'll discuss that, you're not able to apply that map pressure. Now I, I hear a lot of survivor mains and, and I'm a survivor main myself. I just like playing killer because you know it's a you know it's it's something good to just get out of the same rut constantly of waiting in 10 minute queues. If you have the information, you can set up the map. So somebody like Trapper is not somebody that applies great map pressure. He is somebody that applies great map control. So you can use that knowledge to try and control the areas that they aren't currently working. If they pop four generators per se, you can, you know, set up the area around the three. You just have to hurt, like hope that the three generators that they're not currently working on are close enough together. You can do something about it. Now, three gen strats are typically super fucking boring. I don't like doing it. It, it slows down the game. If survivors are just giant weaklings, they, they don't want to take chases around like any of the actual generators or do generators inside of a terror radius. They, they want to continuously run to completely dead areas for, a, for the map on killer, which if you know, the killer is actually looking to win, he needs to stay around those three generators and continue to apply generator pressure to those which means you constantly have survivors running away and not completing the generators and it just becomes a long stalemate and you can end up in like a 30 minute game, which no one wants to do. So that's, that's the downside to generators moving so fast. And when you have map control killers rather than map pressure killers, it, I, dislike this change personally for me when i play killer especially you know being a survivor man myself i i want survivors to have fun in a general sense i want to win the game but i don't want to be a giant dickhead doing it so if i'm currently you know, I'm three hooks into a game, four generators are still up, I've got ruin, or the game's moving at a slow enough uh, pace, I can give survivors all 12 hooks. I, I prefer that. I want survivors to get, you know, I want 12 chases, I want 12 hooks, I want everyone scoring points, I want everyone to have a good time. If, you know, I'm playing Trapper, and somebody throws three safe pallets in my face that I'm forced to break, and then three gens pop before I get my first hook, I'm kind of forced into a scenario where if I want to win the game and have fun myself rather than just getting absolutely, you know, dicked on by, you know, I put that person up on a hook, the next person throws three safe pallets in my face. Like we're on the game and they're just using all four of those God pallets on both levels. Then I need to play closer to the hook rather than throwing someone up on a hook, seeing somebody across the map on barbecue and going all the way across there. I'm more likely to be like, all right, screw that gen. I care about these gens right here next to the hook. And I play around the hook and those gens to me. That's, that's a lot more sweaty than I, I typically like to play. And that's, that's the downside I see in this. Now, of course, there are people who are using current ruin to stop that. Still camp hooks, slug around that hook and try and kill all four people on their first hook with five gens up. And that sucks. It really does. Uh, but you know, everyone has their own different play style. I just feel like the current ruin allows me to be a nicer killer while going for a win 
while the ruin that's coming up might force me if I want to actually play variety killers that don't have the kind of map pressure that uh, a killer like the nurse or hillbilly has. If I want to play somebody like Trapper or Clown, I'm almost instantly, assuming they're good survivors, going to be forced into an area where I'm playing control on a piece of a map and playing around a hook. Now, you know, with your average survivors, even at rank one, your average survivor is still really weak. They urban evade, they, you know, you hit them, they run straight into a wall. The, the chase lasts exactly five seconds. So with those, with those survivors, having either ruin isn't going to make an effect. Like, let's just take your average survivor. Ruin in general just doesn't fucking matter. And with great survivors, ruin in general, either of them, isn't going to matter either. It, it's the good ones who are able to actually, you know, M1 generators and can end that game within five minutes that either of these actually matter on. Now, the, the pros of the current Ruin, that uh, the Ruin plus surveillance is going to be great on killers that actually apply map pressure like your hillbillies and nurse, like we've been discussing. That's actually such a good combination that it's going to be insane. They will always know where a survivor is, so long as Ruin is up. Or they're kicking generators. They will always know. Uh, it's going to be really good in a 3-gen setup, especially if you have Pop Goes the Weasel or anything else, or Thana, or you know anything that can slow down that generator progress. It's going to be really good. Uh, with a pig, ruin can be great because as soon as you start that snowball where you're putting traps on people's heads and they're forced to be off the generators so they can go around and take their helmets off, and especially if they're in a Survivor with Friends team, everyone likes to complain about Survivor with Friends. If they're specifically not popping gens so people get time to take their helmets off, that's time that those generators are regressing. So the new the new ruin, even with basic M1 killers like Pig, uh, can work out. With a killer like Legion, who can go around and hit people and force them into mending states, it'll work out as well, especially if they're pairing that kind of stuff with like Thanatophobia, Dying Light, anything like that. It'll work great. Somebody like a Legion works really well with a lot of uh, aura perks. And with, you know, ruin surveillance, they're going to know exactly where to head, especially if you see only two gens being worked on on the map. With that kind of combination, you know where the survivors are. And you're going to be able to land those uh, mending hits. Now, I I'll just leave it at this. I don't see this change as a good thing for killers. Now, like I said, with certain with certain killers this is going to be great, but I think it it really reinforces that the weaker killers are going to be weaker. And when I'm playing survivor, I like playing against a variety of killers. I don't want to go against the nurse 10 times in a row or only go against hillbillies or only go against huntresses. And I feel like this change overall is going to take the percentage that a certain killers are played and, and make it higher while, you know, the people that are already on the low end drop even further. That kind of sucks. But overall, if they move into a map redesign get rid of all the not don't get rid of all of them obviously all like the safe pallets and the ability for one survivor to just move from pallet to pallet to pallet that doesn't require any mind games they just get to go camp that pallet throw it down force the slower and weaker killers like a trapper to break that pallet 
uh, then, you know, it'll be a good change. And I don't think you can redesign those maps to where it's a faster paced game. You can't have a fast paced game while also having massive passive slowdown. So if this change is happening before map redesign, then I think it's great. It, it's a great change in that effect because you're going to see exactly how killers drop off. You're going to see exactly how you know fast paced the game is without ruin because you can't make that decision with 80% of killers running this perk. It's not possible. So with this perk, you can see how fast paced that game is and redesign the maps accordingly. And if that is what is going to take effect, then it's an amazing change. If not, I feel like half the killers in Dead by Daylight just drop off the map in higher ranks. All right, guys. I'll see you guys in the stream or the next video. Have a great night. Love you all.